So you come to a book like Course in Miracles, and he goes, okay, the world's an illusion, but you're dividing the world up into the good illusions and the bad illusions, the painful illusions and the pleasureful illusions, thereby denying that it's an illusion. You know, you, if illusion means not real or unreality, you can't have good unreality and bad unreality. You can't have pleasureful unreality and painful unreality. If you fall into the ego's trap, all you're doing is you're saying, no, the, the world of duality is reality. I mean, if you follow the ego, that's the only conclusion you can come to. And then, what do you get if you get that? Then war is real. Then pestilence and disease. You have to get the, you get the whole package. If you deny the truth and you accept illusions, then you end up with a package of illusions that seem real. And they do seem very real uh, when you are believing in them. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, what I tell people is, the, the spirit inside you is very gentle and only wants a little bit of willingness to work with. So, if you read the Course, you know, he's saying, I'm going to train you to be a miracle worker. Regardless of what you thought you were going to do <laughs> with your life, uh, this is what you're going to be. You're going to be a miracle worker. And he gives a real specific training program. There are many other pathways to it, too. It's, the Course is not special. It's not, uh, there's nothing special about it. It's just one path on the universal curriculum. But if you just have that little desire, you start meeting people, you start having synchronicities, you start having things happen in your life that is showing you that this is not uh, a, a world of randomness. This is not just a place where there's some that are lucky and some that are unlucky some that get dealt a good hand and some that get dealt a bad hand, you start to realize that it's all happening for the awakened. That everything that's occurring is purposeful because of the purpose behind it. And the most important thing about the Course is, is it, it takes you past the idea that you're a victim. Um, there's a line in the Course that says, I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings that I experience, and I decide upon the goal that I would achieve. And everything that happens to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Now that is a pretty tight picture. Uh, there is no way that you could follow that teaching and perceive yourself as a victim of the world. If, if you're totally in charge of your state of mind, and you're totally in charge of your feelings, and your thoughts, and your perceptions, then there is no one and no thing that can ever uh, burden you. In fact, uh, there's a, an early workbook lesson where Jesus says, I can be hurt by nothing except my thoughts. Except my? My thoughts. I can be hurt by thoughts. nothing except my thoughts. In other words, if you're suffering, there is only one cause of that suffering, and that's the thoughts that you're thinking, the thoughts that you're holding on to. Jesus calls them attack thoughts. <laughs> attack thoughts. Attack. Attack thoughts. Attack thoughts. Attack thoughts. Thoughts. Attack thoughts. To attack thoughts. Yes. So that's why we go into these ideas so carefully because you have to expose all the unconscious attack thoughts in your mind and then release them. In fact, he starts out lesson one, nothing I see means anything. Lesson number two, I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. And he continues on going back and forth between number four is uh, these thoughts do not mean anything. So he's going back and forth between the perceptual world that you think you see and the thoughts in your mind that you think you think. And he's saying, that world is not your real world. That world out there, with seemingly out there with all this pain and suffering and pleasures and all this craziness going on, that's not your real world. And those thoughts that you're thinking in your mind, you're little whirling through your consciousness, those aren't your real thoughts. And 
he actually goes so far as to say that the world that we see is a hallucination. It's kind of like uh, being in the desert someday, you know, when you're really hot Not and tired. In Morgana, yes. Yeah, it's just like a hallucination. Very much like with drug experiences, when you feel like you're hallucinating, he's saying, well, your everyday world is the same. This is pretty humbling stuff. I mean, it, it's like, oh my God, could I have been duped uh, that much uh, to believe in a world? And he says, yep, he said, you built this world, you learned it. You just kept adding layers and layers and layers of illusions on top of each other. Kind of um, the opposite of peeling the onion. You, you built the onion. Or for, for people who like the, the sports metaphors, like the inside of a golf ball, you ever seen the inside of a golf ball? You got the core, and then it's wrapped with all these layers of rubber, like rubber bands strung really tight. He said, You never stop to pause in your building of this world. You never stop to pause to say, what am I doing this for? You just kept building and building and building, illusions upon illusions upon illusions, making it more and more complicated, and never stopping once to ask yourself, what am I doing this for? What's the purpose of all these illusions? So now, he goes the other way, and he says, now we're going to start peeling. We're going to start going through the, the illusions. We're, we're going back to the core. And that's really what... Uh, this Course in Miracles is all about. It takes, it just takes willingness. You don't have to be rich, you don't have to be famous, you don't have to be intelligent, uh, you don't have to have special skills and abilities. I certainly look at my life and I was shy and uh, reserved and uh, I, was, I was unsure uh, and uncertain and doubtful in so many ways in my life. Uh, and now I feel like I'm confident, I'm certain, I'm sure, I'm invulnerable. I can go to countries now uh, where there are gunmen, armed gunmen uh, around me on a regular basis. I, mean, I wave to them, I kind of go by, they get the big guns and I kind of smile and wave at them. They believe me, when you're in purpose, when you're serving God, I think one time, it was maybe in the Bible, if, if God is with us, who can be against us? Is uh, kind of the way that it says. In other words, if you're tuned in with your purpose, if you're about your purpose, you are safe. You are safe. You are you are more safe and secure than any amount of weapons yes. or oh, anything yes, could ever do. That's where you get your invulnerability. The same applies to the chicken what is it the or the bird uh, flu. Yeah. It's one hysteria. And the, 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 the mad, they go with their mask and everything, and mm. oh, uh, disinfect everything, and kill everything, they could be looking like a bacteria. Yeah, it's up here. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's all right. over mine, right. Right. So, so this is important to know because what this is doing, now imagine now the spirit in you is going to work with your belief system. And this, it's not like the ascetic path. You don't have to go out and... and live on the mountain and not have any ice cream and not ever have a piece of candy again. And we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is that the spirit will actually use your belief system when you start to open to it and you may end up with horse racing, <laughs> you may end up with horses, or lots of ice cream, or whatever. I mean, it's not to say that you guys go, well, it's me, all right, Jesus, I'll be a miracle worker. What have I got to give up? What have I got to give up? No. no, it goes the other way. It's like the Spirit uses your preference pattern, and you get like these whims. Uh, it could be for horse, it could be for things that you don't even want. You may be praying and asking, God, I need, my husband and I need something to, to join on, to come together. And then you end up with horse races, you know, and something that you never, in a million years, in a million years you could have never foreseen that. But it, it's just the way that, that the spirit works. It's, it's humorous, it's cosmic humor, it's funny. You have a ball, too. Anybody who thinks this is a, a journey of sacrifice, no way. I feel like I just got in, I'm having more fun now flowing around in the spirit than ever. And it's not, you know, ceremonious churches, and I've got to give a mass and an afternoon mass or wear some kind of big hat and robe and anything. I probably did that in the past, <laughs> uh, past life or something. But, but now it's like it's 
spontaneously flow with the joy